let's learn about some mcqs on respiratory system number one the left lung has how many lobes a2 b3 c4 d5 the right option is two as shown here the left lung has two lobes superior lobe and inferior lobe while the right lung has three lobes it has superior lobe middle lobe and inferior lobe so the right lung contains three lobes and the left lung contains the two lobes question number two dash is located between two pleural sacs and is the central compartment of the thoracic cavity so they are asking about the region which is present between the two pleural sacs a helium b pleura c mediastinum d thoracic cage so as you can see here the region between two pleural membranes as there are two lungs right lung and left lung and the space between where the heart is present this region is known as mediastinum so mediastinum is located between the two pleural sacs and is the central compartment of the thoracic cavity so the right option is the mediastinum in humans what is true about rbc's in regards of respiration a they transport about 80 percent of oxygen and the remaining 20 percent is dissolved in blood plasma b they transport 99.5 percent of oxygen c about 20 to 25 percent of carbon dioxide is carried by them d they do not hold carbon dioxide and the right option and the obvious option for rbc's is they transport 99.5 percent of oxygen as they are the main transporter of oxygens in the blood the oxygen are attached to the hemoglobin molecule and through which they are carried from the lungs to the cells of our body question number four what type of cells produce mucus for the mucous membranes as the respiratory tract is surrounded by these mucus cells and mucus protection helps to protect from the dust particles and germs and they are trapped in it and are propelled out from the body a gobbler cells b macrophages c phagocytes d ciliated epithelial cells and the right option is option a the gobbler cells are the cells that are involved in the production of mucus for the mucous membranes question number five the major signs of hypoventilation is a kinosis b dyspnea c hypercapnia d hypoxia and the right option is in the hypoventilation when there is deficiency of oxygen there is the shortness of breath the shortness of breath may lead to dyspnea and ultimately it can eventually lead to the death of the person due to the unavailability of oxygen to the cells so the shortness of breath is known as dyspnea and it may also lead to the hypoxic condition that our cells and our organs they may not get sufficient oxygen Question number six, the hemoglobin saturation curve has its shape because heme has dash oxygen binding sites. So they are asking about how many oxygen binding sites are present inside the hemoglobin. A1, B2, C3, D4. And the right option is as the hemoglobin is the quaternary structure it is made up of four polypeptide chains as you can see here four different polypeptide chains are joined together to form the hemoglobin structure and it has the iron atom present with it so each chain contains the iron atom so it has the capacity to carry out the four oxygen binding sites so the heme has the four hydrogen binding sites because it has the four polypeptide chains Question number seven, which of the following causes some degree of temporary alkalosis? 
A. Hyperventilation B. High fluid intake C. Excessive smoking D. Swear muscular effort And the right option is hyperventilation as hyperventilation may cause the excessive elimination of carbon dioxide from the body. Through exhalation, the carbon dioxide will be eliminated, through which this whole equation will be disturbed and it will cause the temporary alkalosis in our body. As the carbon dioxide is formed by the carbonate, bicarbonate ion with hydrogen ion to form carbonic acid with the help of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase and which again dissociates into water and carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is eliminated out from the lungs. So this hyperventilation when excessive carbon dioxide is eliminated out, it may cause the this alkalosis because of this presence of bicarbonate ion in the bloodstream, temporary alkalosis due to hyperventilation. Question number eight, collapse of the lung due to absence of surfactant leading to respiratory distress in your born is termed as as you can see here shown here the normal one and the the one which does not have the surfactant it will cause the disruption of the hyaline membrane so there is the b where is a a hyaline membrane disease b pneumonia c bronchiolitis d pneumonitis so the right option is option A. It will lead to the formation of disease in newborn, which is known as hyaline membrane disease. So hyaline membrane disease is caused due to the absence of surfactant in newborns. Question number nine. Func what is the function of surfactant? As we have seen, the absence of surfactant may lead to the formation of hyaline membrane and which may lead to the formation of disease uh, function is a gaseous exchange b reduce the surface tension of the fluid line in the alveoli c prevent the lung potency d lead to lung collapse so the right option is b the function of surfactant is it will reduce the surface tension of the fluid lining the alveoli as you can see here with surfactant it may tends to more likely to collapse and be hardened to inflate. So if the lungs does not have the surfactant, there is more chances of collapse and they will be harder to inflate. As compared to those that are having the surfactant, there will be equal pressure, will inflate at a faster rate. So that's how the surfactant is very important for the lungs. COPD comprises the following diseases. COPD means chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. It comprises of two diseases. A. Asthma bronchiolitis. B. Bronchiotitis and emphysema. C. Bronchitis and emphysema. D. Bronchiolitis and emphysema. And the right option is option C, which is bronchitis and emphysema. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is the combination of bronchitis and emphysema bronchitis is the inflammation of the lining of the respiratory tract and emphysema is the disease in which the septum of the alveoli are dissolved so bronchitis and emphysema is the correct option question number 11 is a case based scenario in which a 35 year old female came with pleuritic chest pain, hemoptysis, and cough. Chest x ray revealed small tubercles in the lungs. The culture showed rod shaped bacilli as the cause of the infection. The possible diagnosis would be means, what is this case scenario? Which disease, which respiratory disease is most likely to be expected? A. Tuberculosis. B. Pneumonia. C. Anthrax, D. Pulmonary Consolidation. So the right option is tuberculosis. As in this case, they have said rod-shaped bacilli. So the rod-shaped bacilli are the bacteria, mycobacterium tuberculosis, which causes the disease known as tuberculosis. So mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria, this presence is present in the lungs. And when they are confirmed through culture and microscopy, raw shaped bacilli 
So this is the confirmed case of the tuberculosis. Here is another case scenario. A 44-year-old year male came to the clinic with the symptoms of breathlessness, cough. The chest extra reveals accumulation of dust-like particles in the lung. He works as a laborer with a construction company and the possible diagnosis that which disease respiratory disease he is most likely to be expected a emphysema b pneumoconiosis c bronchitis d lung collapse the right option in this case is pneumoconiosis as pneumococcus or pneumonia it will be caused by the accumulation of dust particles so as his history shows that the person is labor and works in a construction company so he is most likely to get this respiratory disease through the accumulation of dust particles. So that's why the right option is B. Question number 13. The normal respiratory rate is A. 14 to 18 minute times per minute. B. 70 to 80 times per minute. C. 100 to 110 times per minute. D. 25 to 30 times per minute. And the right option is the normal respiratory rate in humans is 14 to 18 times per minute. In one minute, the normal respiratory rate is for, it's between 14 and 18 times. Number 14, what is the medical term for nasal discharge? A. Nasoria B. Orthopenia C. Rhinoria D. Bronchitis so the medical term for the runny nose or nasal discharge is known as rhinorrhea. What happens when you breathe in the air? A. When you breathe in, your diaphragm expands and your rib cage contracts. B. When you breathe in, your diaphragm contracts and your rib cage expands. C. When you breathe in, your diaphragm explodes and your rib cage contracts. D. When you breathe in, your diaphragm does not move and your rib cage expands. So the right option is option B. When you breathe in, as you can see here, when you breathe in, the diaphragm contracts to increase the volume for the air and the rib cage expands. So that's how when the rib cage it moves outward and the diaphragm moves downward, it contracts. So it creates the space and the area for the air to accommodate. So that's how the right option is B. Scene. Which muscles allow you to breathe in and out the air? A. Uh, the muscles that allow you to breathe in and out is the nose. No. B. The muscles that allow you to breathe in and out is the trachea. This is wrong. The muscles that allow you to breathe in and out is the tongue. C. This is wrong. The right option is D. The, the diaphragm are the muscles that allow you to breathe in and out. So when you breathe in, the diaphragm contracts. It moves downward. And when you exhale out, the diaphragm moves upward and it relaxes. So the right option is D. Diaphragm is the muscles that allow you to breathe in and out the air. Question number 17. The white box is also known as A. Alveoli, B. Larynx, C. Trachea, D. Motor mouth. The right option is B. Larynx. Larynx is also known as the white box, which is made up of C-shaped cartilaginous rings. It is present below the pharynx and just above the trachea. Question number 18. As you breathe, this contracts and flattens to give your lungs room to fill up with air. As already discussed, option A, larynx, B, lung balloon, C, diaphragm, and D, bronchial. And the right option is diaphragm. C, diaphragms. It contracts and relaxes when we take in air and take out the air. So when you take in the air, it moves downward. And when you take out the air, it relaxes and moves upward. Question number 19. When you inhale your lungs, A. Inflate. B. Turn purple. C. Deflate. D. Disappear. 
The right option is A. Inflate. When you inhale the air, the lungs inflate with the air just like balloon. When you blow up the air, the balloons inflate. Question number 20. Which among the following is not good for lungs? A. Exercising. B. Singing. C. Smoking. D. Yelling. The right option is C. Smoking. Smoking is not good for the lungs as the cigarettes. It contains the harmful chemicals and substances present in them that causes the lung damage. As you can see here, the healthy people lungs are pink while the smoker's lungs are dark and molded in appearance. Thank you for watching and keep watching if you want to learn more.